All right, so we're continuing on with our interpretive videos talking about what the heck are they saying in 133, the Valpurgis Effect book. Um, it's been a couple of years since we did our last ones and uh, we're in a new space, but we're still pretty much doing the same interpretation with a few refinements from what we're doing at the university. Um, we're going to be carrying on from where we were, which we had done the top images in, on page 7. So we're going to be starting with the bottom image on page 7 and going on to page 8 from here. And this introduces a new siege or obsessio truque, um, which uh, I believe means something like a shepherd's crook. Um, some people translate it as crutch, um, but we'll just keep it as truque for simplicity. Um, so it starts out by telling us that Kruke is a rare opposition only used by the priests and his students and we're using it to oppose underarm. So Sam is standing in the first word of underarm and it doesn't really say how I'm getting to Kruke, um, but I'm going to go with the idea that I'm starting from right shoulder because when we're at a distance it doesn't really matter. And from here I'm going to bring my sword forward and fold it over almost like I'm doing a stir's hat. Now in the manuscript on this page it actually looks like the sword is pointed straight up and down. But due to what happens on later pages, I'm pretty sure it's pointed forward, but it's also going across in front of Sam here. It also says that you should understand that the person lying in the ward, in other words, Sam, should do something quickly or else he's going to get stabbed. And it also says that I shouldn't just stand here in the siege if he does nothing, I should stab him. Once I've come into this ward, if he does nothing, I should step forward and stab him and I'm pretty safe there. I've covered myself. Now it gives us a number of options for how Sam can respond, but on page 8 it deals specifically with an overbond. So I come forward into Kruke and Sam binds on top of my sword. It then tells us we have all the things that we have seen before with the addition of two new figures. So all the things we've seen before right now are um, the tread through, which I can do from here, but now, I've taken the advantage, as the person doing the siege, I'm the one who's able to do the tread through, and I'm already in that right position. Um, Sam could do a shield knock, but my hands are a little bit higher, so that's a little bit trickier. Um, but we're basically at a different variation of the same bind we've already been working from. So what's our new technique? Well, the new technique is I'm using my shield arm to envelop Sam's arms. So again, I come forward into Kruke, he binds on top, I rotate my sword out so that I can bring my shield underneath, and I step in and I grapple his arms and pull them in, and here I am looking just like the picture at the bottom of page 8. And that's basically it. The important thing that they don't specifically describe in the text, but that, um, sorry, but that makes this technique work, is that I'm bringing my sword out around my shield. So we can clearly see that my sword is over top of my arms at the end of this technique. So um, it seems like that is the purpose of this. This is really important too though, because we've seen that this bind already fits with what we've seen before. So if we go back to where I'm in underarm, Sam's going to start in the right shoulder and come into half shield. This is our original bind. I fall under the sword and shield, Sam counterbinds and steps. I can do the same grapple in all circumstances. It gives it to us in Kruke because in Kruke my hands are high. It's easier to get my shield arm around Sam's arms through that big opening. When I go from underarm, the opening is smaller. Sam, Sam steps into half shield, I fall under, he counterbinds and steps. I've only got a little opening here, but if I consider diligently, I can apply it in this situation anyway. And that is Kruke and the shield arm grapple. Thank you.